Those headphones are black and gold. <gasps> and your whole could outfit I, is black and gold. Could I be more sparkly because and covered in here? Because it's December. It's December. Welcome to December. Was the last episode in December? Maybe. No, it wasn't. <gasps> Probably not. We just arrived to December. Of oh. it. So happy to be here. So happy to be here with you. It's merry and bright. Mm-hmm. And I'm Jessica Hover. <laughs> I'm Lane Dealing Cherland, and this is Very Good Enough, a podcast from Very Good Mothers Club. I feel a little bit like a news anchor. Do you? Sure. I kind of like that. Should but we once make, upon a time, make some I announcements? Thought, yeah, I thought I might be one. Oh, oh, make oh, some announcements. You would be great at that. Oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> You're like avid attention would make yeah. everyone feel like yeah. and breaking news and everyone and would today, lean forward yes oh i like that that's a compliment so mm-hmm. breaking news everybody we only have a few more weeks until christmas, christmas which means the very good mothers club shop is really busy right now we have amazing gifts for moms and dads and babies and toddlers yeah, beautiful and you, things that you picked out yourself thank you and I might even be packing them myself I'm not sure <laughs> hopefully I have a team helping me but um but not really hopefully sure. for you guys yeah my very own hands well to be honest I'm actually the worst packer in the team of <laughs> people who pack orders for us so if ever you receive a slightly ugly order I probably did it for you <laughs> you're welcome I'm not great at it but yeah so if you guys need a holiday gift please check out our shop and if you need holiday support (laughs) please check out our community very good mothers club has a community it's amazing we have it's a membership community you pay monthly to be in but it it has a free trial so if you went in there you could try it for free for a week connect with the people jump on the zoom calls that we do they're really great and if you don't like it no problem because these things are free that we're doing with the podcast and the videos um, so whatever you need, mm-hmm. but the community is amazing. Yeah. We're also going to do fun things in there. Oh yeah. We're going to do an event. Yeah, I don't know what it's going to be. <gasps> it's a super secret from you and, and from us a giveaway. Whoa. We don't even have the details because we just thought of it moments before yeah. putting these on breaking news, breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> Good things are coming is what we're saying. And yeah. we'd love for you to be a part of it. Today's topic, big one, it's a big one and it's a good one. It's mm-hmm. one I think about a lot, care about a lot. It is body image and it's something that's coming up for me recently because I have mom friends who have had babies mm-hmm. and the postpartum body adjustments, it's very real. I think pregnancy and postpartum for me, it felt a little bit like a teenager being mm-hmm. a teenager where you're like growing into your body and you don't have that much control over the shape it's going to take. Yeah. Or especially like during pregnancy, you don't know how you're going to carry your pregnancy. You don't know, um, is it going to be like out here? Is it going to be lower? Is it going to be higher? Are you going to get stretch marks? Mm-hmm. Are you going to look pregnant in your face too? Or are you just going to be one of those people where it's like, I didn't even know you were pregnant until yeah. you turned. Um, yeah, this is a throwback to episode two where I talk about all the reasons I'm super scared. <laughs> Yeah, it's all of real. that. It's it's super vulnerable. The first time it happened, I was really um caught off guard by that. Mm-hmm. I thought that I don't know, maybe I thought I would have more control of it or something. I don't oh, know why I thought yeah. that. But when you're inside of it, it just happens to you. Pregnancy just takes on whatever form it's going to take. Mm-hmm. And then postpartum is very similar in that you don't have a lot of control. Um some people they breastfeed and lose a lot of weight. Some people breastfeed and actually gain weight. Some people don't breastfeed at all. And their body does ba- basically the same thing, lose weight or gain weight. Yeah. Um, yeah. Stretch marks, no stretch marks. Like there's just a lot of change that happens. Mm-hmm. Losing your hair. I'm like now going to make oh, it gosh, sound really yeah. scary. <laughs> well, well, no matter what your body has accomplished, whether it's this yes. amazing feat or not, it's also such a timely time yes. to be talking about body image. We just did Thanksgiving, True. which is so food focused and so family focused. Yes. And family also often like leads into this. We inherit these traits from the people who came before us. We pass them along. You're right. Also, families can be really um, clear with one another. Direct. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Well, overly direct, yeah. maybe a little bit rude. That's true. Like there's just, there's and so there's much. photos. It's when you take photos. a lot of photos with people mm-hmm. and then you're looking back at them. One of the moms in the community recently was like, ah, oh, it's hard for me to see photos of my myself mm-hmm. lately. And uh, another mom I spoke with this morning that I was texting with 
basically only takes pictures of her husband and baby. Wow. Um, she's feeling t- a bit too insecure to get into oh the gosh, pictures. Oh gosh, she's kind of erasing herself yeah. from this time and period. Yeah, and I'm like, please get in the pictures. You mm. need to be in these pictures. It's worth it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's so relevant. And honestly, we were talking before this, um, before we started recording, that the topic of body image is something that I've been passionate about for many, many years. And it's quite universal. Like it's yeah. not, it's not people who have had babies, they struggle, the rest of the world's got it. Um, in fact, I, I used to work for a nonprofit where we traveled internationally and I would, um, kind of take mental notes of all the different people I met and the differences in our cultures and the fact that those women struggled too. I also know men struggle with this, but I, I think our audience right now is a lot of women. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to talk to you guys, but we were in Thailand in um, kind of a jungle type setting. And um, I remember the girls in the community were like measuring each other's wrists to see who was Whoa. the smallest. Yeah. These were girls who had been taken out of human trafficking. They were like, you would think people, I rather, I thought people with issues like that probably couldn't be bothered sure. with something so vain as the size of our body yeah well um, it gets presented as like a huge american media problem yes. like well yeah. little girls look at magazines and they blah 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 right, right. so this is what you're yeah. saying now even when you said it just a minute ago to me feels very eye-opening yeah that it's feeling. yeah there's something about it that we we feel like everywhere i, I was in chile working with college age girls and they would go in groups to the bathroom to purge after meals Um, And that was also eye opening. It's like, oh, okay, so this is happening. Like I knew it was happening to my friends back Mm -hmm. home because I, I was part of it. I had struggled with eating disorders at different times. And even when I didn't, I was very aware of my own body shape. Mm -hmm. And I think I understood it to be like the more thin you are, the more beautiful you are, the more beautiful you are the happier you are or the more value you have or the more money you'll make or something. It was, I wouldn't have said it like that, but looking back, I think that was the equation. Yeah, exactly. And so as I grew and, um, was given opportunity, I started working with women to like teach them about beauty, identity, and value. Mm -hmm. And we got to do it internationally and it was really special. Um, and then I also started working in the fashion industry. And so I would be backstage for fashion events, big fashion events like New York fashion week or fashion shows here that involved celebrities. Um, in fact, I won't say names, but if I said names, you would be amazed. It's it's like some of the most famous people that we look up to and the icons when it comes to beauty. And those people are insecure too. And I was there listening to them talk about like, my hair looks like shit. My body is this, my body, like, you know, and for me, Crazy. it was really important that I heard that because I, as a young person would think they're the ones who've got it sorted out. Like right. they're being paid because they are beautiful. They got it. And yet they don't feel totally well inside the way I assumed I would feel if I had what they had, yeah, right? They, they must be on the far side of that equation yes. in the happiness zone. Yes, exactly. And so um, so here we are talking to you guys, this precious, precious group who has probably experienced a lot of physical changes mm-hmm. and is trying to navigate that and feel well inside. And I've heard um, like one mom recently said, you know, actually my body image issues are less challenging to face right now because I have a baby. Because every time I start to feel insecure, I look at the little baby I made and I think, oh, that's so cool. My body did that. And so it's almost like her respect for her own body grew through that process. That's really good perspective. Um, But what I want to talk about today is kind of how we find some confidence in who we are right now, how to maybe make some peace with how we feel in our bodies, even if ultimately we'd like to change our bodies. Yeah. Uh, I'm not suggesting that we just live in this like fluffy unicorn rainbow land where we just disassociate from beauty mm-hmm. altogether or from, pretend. yes, pretend that we don't want to look a certain way. But I do think it's important to have a foundation that is gratitude for our body and gratitude even for what our body's done. If we're living in a postpartum body where we're like, man, my body is a different size, a different shape, maybe has marks on it that it didn't Mm -hmm. have before. How can we be really accepting of this body and thankful and loving towards it? Even just aging, even just a body that has stayed alive, like whether or not you, this is like past gender, past what your body has accomplished, just 
staying alive here. has been the goal this whole time. And yeah. yet every sign on my body that I have stayed alive is terrifying oh, to me. You're right. No, that's so real. And there's something about being a woman who's aging that I maybe, I don't know if you've noticed this, noticed this, but Sean and I talk about it like for a man who's getting older, it's sort of like, oh, well, you know, it's mm-hmm. actually sexier for a guy, like get mm-hmm. older, get some gray hair, like that's going to look so good. Yeah. I think about that in terms of forehead wrinkles okay. because mine have been forming for a very long time because I'm very expressive up there. Yeah. Um, and I see very old men with terribly wrinkled or terribly is not even the word I want to use, but like tremendously, tremendously wrinkled wrinkled, and it's amazing. It looks like carvings. Mm. It it, it looks like art to me. Yeah. Like, gosh, it looks like someone just like took a, like a brush and stroked it and it feels like treasure and it feels so cool. Mm -hmm. But then when I look at these like crevices slowly coming and I put all of these things on (laughs) in order to prevent their development, I'm like, no, no, no. Even though they came from the faces that I've made, they're signs of my expression over yeah. time yeah. and I love it in a very old man I love it in Clint Eastwood yes but on my own face yeah. it feels like here I am losing right. whatever I had before I'm losing it yes and the probably so say we take like Clint Eastwood, Clint Eastwood and then take women who are famous around mm-hmm. the same age yeah. it's probable that the women have Botox but the men don't oh certainly right um certainly I've never told the internet internet that I got Botox before, but I'm sure Did they, you? I'm sure they know. Yeah. Um, you feel, yeah. you feel ready to <laughs> I'm like, share since we're here. <laughs> um, since, I want to yeah. hear everything about that. Yeah. I've gotten it before. Um, one thing I will say is that when I was little, I remember I was smiling for a photo for yeah. softball. We had to take team photos and I smiled really big. I've always had a really big smile. And the woman said, the, like the coach woman was like, you need to stop smiling so big. You're going to get smile lines really early. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. And then th- I just, I basically have a few of these stories where I think I'm hyper oh. insecure about my lines. So I'm, I need now a- that we're friends, guys, I'm telling you this. But I need a minute to feel rage. Yeah. I feel like yeah. I'm thank you. Now that I'm that. older and I can oh. look back, but like I was a pretty insecure kid. Yeah. And um, no. And then in my twenties, I, I had a few people who were like older people that I admired were like, wow, you got lines early. Like you, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I mean, like imagine saying that to someone, I would no. never say that. So I, I'm quite insecure to be honest oh. about my lines and I'm making peace with them. I do like how my face looks when it's a bit smoothed out. Um, I think I'm lucky to live in a time when you can get certain yeah. things done. And um, I, I got it for free because someone needed a model for it. Cool. And so, yeah, so I've done That's it. So um, Anyway, what I was so, oh, so this is interesting. So here I am talking about being grateful for our body. Mm -hmm. And then I've also, well, last episode I joked about wanting a boob job. And this Mm -hmm. one I have just Mm -hmm. confessed to the internet for the first time that I got something done. Um, There is also a tension in that of like, how much are you allowed to change this body that you live inside of? Mm -hmm. And, um, and I am somebody who makes a living through being on camera. So I've also thought if I wasn't on camera a lot, would I care as much about lines on my face? And I don't really know. I'm I'm, actually don't have a good answer for that. Yeah. There's no way to, but yeah, but I do think like I have friends who are professional models and they make a living through that. And when they get work done, um, on their, on their bodies or face, I actually feel nothing about like, there's no part that's like, Oh my gosh, can you believe they got fillers? Mm -hmm. It's more just like, yeah, that makes sense. Like their, their living is being generated through this, that they are maintaining. Um, there's tensions involved in that. Yeah. We're in such an interesting moment of this conversation where, we're sort of post body positivity and into mm-hmm. sort of like a full acceptance zone, which I'm into. Yeah. I'm we didn't plan it. this. We didn't. No, and, and we know that this outline. might be this. Th- this is going to be interesting because some of you guys are going to have strong feelings one way or the other. Right. I'm okay with it. Um, I, I am a people pleaser by nature, yeah. so I would rather just agree with you all, which gets harder the more of you that there are. Uh-huh. But um, if we don't like it, I'm just going to cut it. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's true. But I will say like for me, I don't think everyone should do exactly what I do, but mm-hmm. I also don't necessarily think I'm doing what's wrong. And I, um, well, here's how I make my decisions. Then we can see like when it came to getting anything put into my face, I wanted my husband to have an opinion on it. 
mm-hmm. he looks at this face, you know, he, yeah. he would care. Um, the other thing is, do I have the resources for it? If I don't have money for life or my family, then it feels sort of funny if I'm taking a little bit and going and spending a lot. So that's, so I don't have a boob job mm-hmm. and that's because yeah, it's more our money is going, <laughs> our money is going <laughs> other places. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, and then at the same time, I do live very much um, of the opinion that like we should really love ourselves and love who we are and love the way we look. Um, and I think there's allowed to be a tension there. Uh, uh, one of my closest friends got a, a surgery. I think it was a nose job, nose job. And uh, my concern actually wasn't like, oh no, don't get a nose job. It was more like best friend who I love and I love your nose, get the nose job, but please love yourself like the nose is not you. Yeah. So if you have the resources to get this, and this is something that's really going to enhance your life, then I can be a supportive friend to you. But I hope that you know your value is not in the nose that you're altering. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's such a com- complex thing. And like we paint our houses, we paint, we, we paint our faces. Yeah, we paint our faces. We get braces and headgear. I got braces, headgear. Hey, a lot of money for tattoos, tattoos. that I was going to show you, but I can't. Um, yeah yeah interesting we color our hair yeah and now we live yeah but you know what's hard for me Mm -hmm. Mm, so this is gonna be this is just welcome to my confusion I really don't love young young girls which some people will be like but Jessica you're a young girl but like when I worked in fashion girls like 16 17 18 getting fillers and Botox and nose jobs and stuff um that was sad for me. I feel sad about that. I also think it's interesting that some of the icons in the world right now, our beauty icons, the people we look to and set that standard culturally, they are so different from what they were, the body they were born into. In fact, Mm -hmm. you would look at them and maybe think, wow, they had really good surgeons more than, wow, they are really grew in such a yeah really I'm like I don't want to be insulting but do you know what I'm saying I do and this is this is where like this is what feels so like there's so much traction around Mm -hmm. this to me like it's so grippy Mm -hmm. is that us each of us and each of our individual opinions about what people should or shouldn't do Mm -hmm. what we should or shouldn't do it's very hard to talk about it to find words that don't have that should feeling mm. that don't have a, a morality attached to I them. Know, yeah. So it's this curious thing where there's value attached to beauty mm-hmm. and then a devaluing very much attached to whatever we perceive as a lack of beauty. Right. But then we also have this moral claim on making an assessment for other women about how they choose to go about their bodies. Yes. So there's, we, we've, maintain this um we've stayed in this sort of commodified place where like female beauty is something that we get to discuss about and pull on and make choices about and Mm -hmm. you get to talk about other people and talk about yourself yeah and it all has this edge of like assessment and measuring Mm -hmm. to it everything's yeah you're right everything's got a ranking system yeah and so it's it's more complicated even than just having an internal tension there's also a tension of about the ten- yeah. the tension you're right I mean my landing place generally is like I just want everybody to do what they want and feel sure. happy and good but and, and what I want to do the piece that feels important to me is to be caring for the person inside and I don't mean beauty is on the inside and you shouldn't think about your outsides right. I think that's a fluffy nothing statement uh-huh. um, I also just don't think that's like real to what human sure. beings are Actually or faced, like yeah. any <laughs> any animals in the world like we we develop aesthetic taste yes it's evolutionary it's part of our life it's yeah. like part of who we are and I don't think it's a thing to be ignored especially because there's so much delight that can come from the appreciation of form yes. and figure and your body should hopefully be attached to pleasure mm. in taste and in touch and in so many ways like your body the way that it looks is part of the full experience of being inside of it and also sharing it with other people, whether that's children that you nourish or whether that's a partner that you enjoy. Yeah. Like there's so much to it. So I, I never want to be presenting the idea that your external self is not important. Like it's all you. Yeah. It's all you. We didn't mean to do this. (laughs) We (laughs) didn't mean to make this video about this, but it actually feels really good. One thing as you're talking that I'm thinking about is maybe it's important to 
have realistic expectations when it comes to beauty and also realize that like if we feel ugly because we're comparing ourselves to I'm not going to list any names because I don't think it's helpful but some celebrity somewhere that has done a lot to themselves or you feel like your lines your lines make you look old and you're insecure about them and you're comparing yourself to Jessica Hover the YouTuber who got Botox what you need to realize is that she got Botox so if she didn't she would look like you and if you don't want to look like that there there are things available but you don't have to but I just think it's really good if we can separate like okay I feel a certain way if I'm comparing myself to someone then let's think critically about what we're comparing ourselves to because it's possible the standard we're comparing ourselves to is one impossible Mm -hmm. because they used outside help to get the appearance that they have and then it's also likely that that person is very insecure (laughs) so then it's like oh well everything would feel better in me if I just look like that person Mm -hmm. but you meet that person and they aren't necessarily as confident as they they might lead you to believe and if they are it's probably not because they've had all the work done that they've had done it's probably because they've done a lot of inner work Mm -hmm. to make peace with who they are yeah and um I got, I got a, an offer to do a job, um, not that long ago that was basically like to do what's called a mommy makeover. So they would take my extra skin and my, my, um, left my fat, I guess, and, um, remove it and like tighten it. And my honest thing was, I thought, wow, that would be pretty cool because I actually am insecure about the extra skin that I have there, even though I also realized that if I live with it for the rest of my life. I earned it and I'm excited about it. My kids were entirely worth it. And then I was like, I guess I can't take this job because what kind of example is that to people? But then also how funny that secretly I would do that secretly, meaning like not publicly Mm. because I think what an amazing thing to live in a time when I could do that. But then also publicly, I would be scared of what people would think or like any pressure it would put on the listener or viewer that you have to do that in order to feel beautiful. And I... Um, I don't know if I, I basically, I'm still in this waiting period with the job. So it's not turned down and it's not, I'm going to do it, but I'm just being honest with you guys that it's that complicated. It's that complicated that I don't know in certain things. Like my protection of my viewer is I don't want to be an example of something that's not real. Mm -hmm. But then I also am a woman living in this body in the same world you guys are on camera a lot in a city that puts a lot of value on the way we look. Uh And I also want to feel really great inside the body that I have. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's just, it's just not that black and white. And I watched um, an influencer that I follow say that she's going to be more open about any work that she gets done Mm -hmm. just so that her followers don't um, basically feel misled, like by the example she is. But then she followed it up by saying, but by the way, by doing this, a lot of people are going to say I'm vain and, Um, So this is impossible. So what I'm doing is impossible. And if I didn't do it, a lot of you would say I look old because Mm -hmm. then she started showing like people saying, oh, you look older already. And so I, it actually helped validate me a little bit in the position that I'm in um, of just like, I don't know how to do this right exactly. And I care really deeply about the people who follow me. And I also want to feel comfortable in my own body. And I'm just going to figure that out as I go. Yeah. But yeah, just to be open. Wow, what a vulnerable thing to share. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, so, I mean, I, I mean that so sincere, sincerely, like what an interesting conundrum to be in. Yeah. And I, I do think it's very brave to share a thing that you haven't decided about. Yeah. Anything that you haven't decided haven't. about yeah. it is a vulnerable position to be in. Yeah. That's really, really interesting. Yeah. And so then also <gasps> as a mom of daughters, mm-hmm. I mean, sons too, I, I, absolutely understand that sons are impacted by this stuff but I was a daughter Mm -hmm. and so I remember what it was like to be told I was beautiful by my mom Mm -hmm. and then watch my mom not like her body Mm -hmm. vocally not like her body say bad things about her body look in the mirror and criticize certain parts of her body yeah and I remember internalizing it all the way till now I know that it happened but I remember as a kid watching it and thinking 
okay, like that's what's true about my body somehow. Like even yeah. if it wasn't that clear, it was basically this idea, which I described to you of like, I know I look like her. Mm-hmm. I know that in time my body will look like her, even though I was like my first memory of this, I'm about five. Okay. And so even if she tells me every day that I'm beautiful, it's almost like I know what's true hmm. about me Yeah. because I see it Yeah. and I'm not a dummy, right? Yeah. So then as I raise my girls, if I'm altering my body or putting something, I mean, actually I've been honest with my daughter about like, I put something in my face that made my wrinkles go away. And she's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, look, I can't raise my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, this is crazy. That's so interesting. Um, and, because I'm just trying to make it like, you don't ever have to do this. And yeah. I did it. And isn't it kind of silly? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I hope that it would be playful. It, yeah, I guess. I mean, for I us so far, it's been playful. Yeah. yeah, I'm lucky because I have a husband who also makes it playful. Mm-hmm. Though I realize that even extended family might watch this and be like, "I can't believe it." You right, know? right. But but here we I would am. love to be in a space of like neutrality and gratitude and yeah. enjoyment of our own bodies, and then from there, without layers and layers of negative muck, get yeah. to be like, "How do I feel about this? Do sure. I want to change something? Would it be fun for me if yeah. this thing was a little bit different or that yeah. thing like that?" That and I think would be the ideal place from which to be able to make back. a choice. You can't. I mean, unless you're getting something like really life altering that you can never come back from. But mm-hmm. I'm thinking like you can try something. You can go become a redhead today and then decide, you know what? I love my natural brown yeah. hair. I'm coming back. Do you um, know that I had red hair all through high school? Did basically, you really? Basically like 16 to 21 or two. Oh, I it can was see like it looking cute red, on you. Red, because I wanted really? to be Jenny Weasley. That's so cute. Oh From the gosh. books. Okay. <laughs> Don't come at me about this movie. <laughs> they <Yeah>. destroyed her. <laughs> oh, that's really cute. Yeah. That's, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I could actually see you with red hair, but you look great with brown hair. Thank you. Yeah, I guess my heart on all of this stuff is like, if we are really critical of ourselves and if our decisions about our body and our view of our body and our appearance mm-hmm. is coming from a place of almost being mad at our body, like, mm-hmm. how dare you betray me? My soul is so pretty, yeah, <laughs> but my body yeah. is so fat or so old mm-hmm. or so whatever, yeah. then I'm of the opinion that nothing can thrive in an environment like that. Mm-hmm. No, plants do better when we tell them compliments. Right. There's studies on that. Um, kids do best when they're affirmed and loved and yeah. and treated lovingly, yeah. right? Life flourishes. Life flourishes in loving environments. So even if we are honest with ourselves and we go, man, I just cannot get over my insecurity about my wrinkles or I feel like I would, I want to be stronger. I don't want to be this size. I've never been this big. That's the mm-hmm. thing people say a lot. It's possible to be like, I would love to change the shape of my body and I really respect my body and I'm really thankful yeah. for this body. And if we're not there yet, there are practices we can do to get ourselves there. And even you talking about exercise for mm-hmm. the sake of mental wellness more than physical size or shape. Yeah. So running has been a really interesting experience for me. I was just like never a person who worked out. I was a girl who read books and climbed trees and made pie. Like I was, I was an inside kid. Okay. And then trees. Yeah. Inside and trees exclusively. <laughs> Actually kind of similar. Uh-huh. Now yeah. your inside's very cool and you yeah. have plants in here. Yeah. And so books. you combined all <laughs> these <laughs> worlds. Brought the trees yeah. inside and now there's no separation. <laughs> That's right. Um, but so I have had like sporadic stops and starts with trying to become a person who exercises over time. Really was just thin enough to not freak out. Okay. Until I was like 24, basically. Okay. Which I don't mean as a value statement, just sure. as like an assessment of yeah. of my own sweet little brain being yeah. like, I'm not, I don't hate this body enough to be motivated enough to work out. Yes. And which, which you just like summarized what exercise is for so many of us. Mm-hmm. It is an overflow of the hatred we feel yeah. towards our body. And it is almost an act of punishment mm. to be like, oh, I ate the wrong thing or just I am the wrong thing. Yeah. And now I'm going to exercise. Be in pain. S- yes. And and suffer because that's what I deserve or rather that's what this body deserves right. for torturing me like this. Yeah. Ab- absolutely. Ooh, that was powerful. <laughs> <laughs> So running, uh, there were some stops and starts. One of them included my encounter with a bad guy, as we talked about a little bit ago. So then that put that on the back burner for a long time. And then part of the healing from that was being like, I am going to run. Yeah. Like this is not going to be a thing that is like 
a lot of things got taken. Yeah. Yeah. In that moment. And this is not going to ultimately be one. I want to do this. Mm. And so I learned how to run essentially during the pandemic. Um, also partly being like, Oh, there's a global collapse and people are buying like dying by the thousands every day. And I don't have medication for my depression. So I got to figure something out here. And that's really like, that is when it became worth it to me to start working out. So then there was like part of running was like, I'm learning how to do a thing. And isn't it cool that I'm doing a thing that I would never do. But then Mm. I was like, Oh, I know how to run. So now I'm running because I need this body to change whatever okay. small amount of weight that I gained after I got married and happy and started wrapping food in tortillas because I lived with a oh, boy. <laughs> that's cute. Always wanted everything in a tortilla. <laughs> that's so cute. Like that's got to go. Yeah. This like fifth, like 15 or so pounds. Like okay. being like, no, this is different from my normal and I cannot live. Sure. I cannot live like this. Yeah. And now I'm through that a little okay. bit more a mm-hmm. little bit more through I don't want to say past I want to say like sure still in it but beyond it a bit yeah and 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 also the last year of my life has had so much internal growth and mm-hmm. so much so much has changed in my life to make it more satisfying in mm-hmm. other ways mm-hmm. that a lot of that has softened like some mm-hmm. of that has That's gone cool. by the wayside in just like growing as a person in a bunch of ways and in my life becoming really really satisfying to me oh, in a bunch of interesting so ways good. So now the thing is like the thing that has made running really stick is that it feels so good on my brain. It's like one of the only times that my brain actually actively feels good. Mm -hmm. Like I measure it every day of like, yeah, I don't feel depressed. Cool. Is there anxiety today? Nope. Like I just check in to make sure it's not feeling bad. Yeah. And then one of the only times that it ever feels actually so good is when there's been a run. Mm -hmm. So now and hopefully continuing into the future, I try to just be like, here I'm going on this run today because my brain's going to feel so good. And then at the end, the accomplishment is like, God, my brain feels so good. Mm. Instead of, did I go far enough? Did I do enough in order to get this body to change and shift and whatever? I totally relate to that. And I think that's now what motivates my exercise more than anything. I think I I got to a point where I felt so low emotionally Mm -hmm. and then exercise was a thing that lifted me up. And now it's like, I never want to feel that low again. So exercise continues to be my antidepressant of choice, though it is hard to work into a life. So I'm trying to do it more. And thankfully, thankfully, Sean recognizes that it's really important for me. And I recognize it's important for him too. So we kind of help each other. Like I make sure that there's windows of opportunity for him to skateboard. And even if that means it's me with the three kids, and even if it's kind of overwhelming, like the the cost is worth it Mm -hmm. for him to be well yeah and then vice versa if there's opportunity for me to go even if it costs something meaning him with the kids or or literally like a cost to pay for a gym membership or something which I now have got one recently uh we've decided it's worth it for the sake of my mind more Mm -hmm. than anything wow this conversation is so much more real than I anticipated it was going to be too. I kind of like it. We had such I mean, a it's a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little scary. I, I guess where my mind goes is like some people are going to listen and feel very decided mm-hmm. about the things we're talking mm-hmm. about. Um, and maybe, maybe I guess I'll just say that my perspective on things right now at this stage in my life is that there's got to be room for growth. So I may make some decisions about my body that y- that you, friend, look at and go, I cannot believe that. How dare her? Yeah. And she's an example. Yeah. Um, or how sad that she. Or how sad. Yeah, exactly. How sad. And she's supposed to be leading people and now other people are going to mm-hmm. do it. Um, one, one very true, real thing is that I'm just a person trying to figure stuff out. Yeah. That's what we all are. And, and as I like raise my children now and I think about what's something I hope to instill in them is that they're allowed to fail. Like, in fact, it's very important for us to understand that failure is, is growth and, and failure is a strong word, but like I might, I might be failing. I might realize that Botox was the wrong choice, or I might end up doing a job where I get excess skin removed and then later be like, Hmm, you know what? Looking back, that wasn't my best move. But what I'll try and do is invite you guys into some of the process of this. So at least there's like real vulnerability happening, but I'm just, I think for a time for me, I felt like I can't get this wrong in front of people. So Mm, like the presentation of whatever I bring needs to be very edited 
as real as it is, it needs to be like, oh, don't say the wrong thing. Because right. you say the wrong thing, then people won't like it or you do the wrong thing and yeah. it's not going to be good. And Yeah, precise and yeah, palatable. Yeah, exactly. And almost like I shouldn't be on camera or I shouldn't put myself out there unless I have very decided beliefs and ideas. Mm-hmm. And, and in some ways, I appreciate that about myself and I'm going to be really... Mm, intentional about what I share with the internet yeah but on the other side of this I am a person and I'm in my early to mid 30s trying to figure out life and I think looking backwards at the last last 10 years there's a lot that I have learned and a lot that I'm trying to navigate here and I think that's something that drew us to each other actually was like before recording anything was just like deep vulnerable conversations yeah being like yeah this is what I understand this is what I don't understand this is what's hard this is what I think what do you think yeah and um and I the perfectionist in me would like to have it all together but the real me doesn't have it all together but she did get Botox yeah so here we are and the real me really cares about the topic of body image Mm -hmm. identity beauty like how we present ourselves to the world um for the postpartum mom who's been reaching out there's there's actually a lot of you guys who i interact with and some of them are my very close friends um one really key piece of advice could be get some bigger clothes we talked about how hard that is and how scary it is but uh do what you need to do to feel comfortable inside your body right now and if one of the major things that's catching you up is that none of your clothes fit you and you don't like the way you look in front of people getting a few outfits that are the size that really does fit you comfortably and feel great just ignore the size the size is just a number who kn- who knows what it even means yeah um, but get something that feels really good to you and then the other piece is kind of coming back to how we talk about ourselves you know that feeling I was talking about of like how contagious it is you're in a bathroom with a group of girls or women you could think back to high school or you could probably think about right now Mm -hmm. and one of the women in there says I hate the way I look or like my hair looks crazy or I'm so fat and then all of a sudden everyone in the room starts to talk badly about Mm -hmm. themselves because it's suddenly like that's that's the culture or like what we're doing yeah that's it yeah um, how real that is. And would you mind just talking about the thing of, you said you worked with someone yeah. who impacted you? I worked with this woman just for a few months who was younger than me and had her own set of like kind of swirling fears about mm-hmm. how she looked beautiful, tiny, like in the, not that those two are equivalent, but like mm-hmm. she, she would fall into the category that would get assessed as like thumbs up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a good way of you saying know what I mean? it. Sure. Um, and she was endlessly talking about like, and then I got my this, and then my this like under under the chin thing. Mm-hmm. And but you got to do it when you're young. They said the surgeon said like you have to do it when you're young, mm-hmm. otherwise it's gonna, which is a thing that happens to women in my family. Okay. And got way under my skin oh, about man. that. Her her the nose job, and she wanted it to be like this. So she got the second one, and so that it was like this. Yeah. And she was like, "You're, you're a size six. Yeah. Like it was like a gap, like a genuine, a, genuinely a gasp. Like not even okay. trying to be mean to me. It was just like Meaning, whoa, like wrong size." Mm-hmm. Oh, I had that. I can't believe that yeah. it's so large. Wow. And I, it, it, it like, affects you. Aff- yes. I hadn't worried about aging. I hadn't even really worried about these forehead wrinkles. Like yeah. none of it. It was a few years ago and she even was like, you're 28. Mm. <laughs> I was like, how can you be so old and so large? How can you be so old? <laughs> 20, 28. You've and been here 28 yeah. years? Um, uh-huh. And it got so deeply under my skin that I actually am like, I feel like I'm still recovering, Mm. not from this person who Mm -hmm. wasn't trying to hurt me, but just from this like cloud of these words that were around all the time. It like fundamentally shifted how I thought about myself. It's that stuff. So real. Mm -hmm. I have certain environments like I worked in fashion where everybody, I mean, it's all about how you look. And on the one side, there's a real appreciation for beauty that I think is amazing. Yeah. Um, but then on the other side, there's the world that we live in now and everybody, everybody in that world that I was in was getting stuff done. But we were talking about how mainstream Botox is and we didn't even know. I had no idea. This was another like blew my mind maybe two or three years ago. I just thought that like that's what 
women in LA do because mm-hmm. I was not here yet. <laughs> sure. um, yeah. There are like some, some rich ladies I know who do that. And it goes with the, I only notice because it goes with other things that are noticeable sure. yeah. or you're like, Oh, like that's one of those people who that's yeah. just like what she does. And, um, everybody does it. I know. It feels yeah. like, I mean, I don't mean to leave anyone out who hasn't, I haven't sure. done that yet either. And there's a, there's a yet in there. Cause that's there's a, a question possible. for me. I don't know. Um, but it feels like everybody does like I I am shocked in my hometown am I here yeah in the city I just moved from like young old like people get preventive Botox when they're like 24 yep yeah yeah on the one side I felt like oh that's kind of exciting to be alive where there's like actually things you can do yeah, about aging like that's kind of fun options are cool yeah maybe don't ever get group on botox uh, i have mm-hmm. someone that i love who did it and it didn't go well in um, all areas of your life exercise wisdom and discretion <laughs> <laughs> that's really true anything important probably yeah. shouldn't be discounted yeah. yeah yeah i i have something that like the irony i'm thinking of like certain people in my life who might be like i can't believe you did that mm-hmm. um but also some of those people they have commented on how I got older and how I look older. So I think if you're going to have strong opinions against Botox, don't remind people how old they look. You can't it be like no help. Botox and you and look don't like a hag. <laughs> like, don't get older. <laughs> yeah. Don't be that guy. Yeah, you're not that not guy, helpful. pal. No, that's not <laughs> helpful at all. Um, cool. And okay, so here's something, Lane. What about the whole idea of kids and how we talk about this stuff in front of them and even like connections between family like here I am telling a story about how I was told I was beautiful a lot yeah. from my family thank you guys if you're listening that's so great yeah and how I was deeply impacted by the insecurities I saw people have mm-hmm. um mainly my mom and also mom if you're listening I love you you didn't do anything wrong yeah. everyone's just doing their best you're but just a woman living in the world yeah, like all yeah. other women With trying all to navigate pressures. their way through the world yeah. yeah but yeah being being a mom and having the pressures that we feel though okay let's just call it this the world we live in wants us to have babies but look like we didn't mm-hmm. and act like we didn't. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, the baby should be an accessory to a body that looks like it did not. Mm-hmm. But have they a baby. also want to attack you for having fun after you have babies, too. True. And being a person. Very hard. Yeah. Very hard. They want you to stay at home yeah. and be super maternal, but also yeah. super hot, but yeah. also present for them to look at whenever they yes. want. Yeah. How d- I don't know how to do it all. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. It's a lot of things. And this could be another great moment to mute people's social medias if they're not helping because sometimes we do this really cute thing after we have our baby of like, oh my gosh, look, I already lost all my baby weight three weeks later. And we're like, okay, girlfriend, just use some wisdom before posting stuff like that because <laughs> I'm not sure what you want. Maybe text it to your friend and be like, look. Text it to your friend. Text what a great because place to be excited that you feel good about how your body looks. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's so wonderful. Yeah. There's because for the rest of us, wrong we're with just, how happy we're you just feel. crying. Uh-huh. We're like, I don't know what to feel. I don't know. Maybe that's just me unleashing my own insecurity. But I, I would just tell you that I'm excited. If you're my friend and you lost your baby weight, praise yeah that's so great but there's just ways of communicating that come off certain ways Mm -hmm. mute the heck out of people who aren't helping that's all i'm (laughs) saying i guess that's my two episodes in a row where the recommendation is is mute mute, people mute mute, mute. (laughs) yeah social media can be so confusing Mm -hmm. um okay yeah we're talking such an interesting place because we're so over time and i have no idea which of these precious gems are gonna go (laughs) okay make this episode longer this is a christmas gift there's so much in here that's honest and okay. real. This episode's longer. If you've lasted this long, you win. Yeah. And we're really good friends because okay. I'm talking to you and to Lane, yeah. who is also a new friend. Yeah. Um, like a friend. Okay. Well, if this is going to be long, then I'm going to share this thing. Please do. That is now such an interesting juxtaposition. Mm-hmm. I planned to share this imagining that we would have an episode about body image that was like... I love who you are inside and I want you to nurture the person mm-hmm. who's within you. And I like, I thought it would be mm-hmm. very internal and that we would land in a, mm-hmm. in a much more, um, I guess like predictably nurturing mm-hmm. place. And this has now gotten a lot more real and I'm so into it. One of the things that happened for me pretty recently is I have read this book that is super famous it's called women who run with the wolves. Okay. She talks about, I'm going to read it to you in a second, but she talks about, the connection 
that a woman's body has with her ancestral line, mm. which your ancestral line, of course, flows both directions yeah. back behind you and then to the ones who come after you. So it feels very relevant. So I'm going to read this long passage of this book and then I'm going to cut it up a lot. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> to take much pleasure in a world filled with many kinds of beauty is a joy in life to which all women are entitled. To support only one kind of beauty is to be somehow unobservant of nature. There cannot be only one kind of songbird, only one kind of pine tree, only one kind of wolf. There cannot be only one kind of baby, one kind of man, or one kind of woman. There cannot be one kind of breast, one kind of waist, one kind of skin. Women who are big or small, wide or narrow, short or tall, are most likely to be so simply because they inherited that body configuration of their kin. If not their immediate kin, then those a generation back or two. To malign or judge a woman's inherited physicality is to make generation after generation of anxious and neurotic women. It robs her of pride in the body type that was given to her by her own ancestral lines. If she is taught to revile this body inheritance, she is immediately slashed away from her female body identity with the rest of her family. If she is taught to hate her own body, how can she love her own mother's body that has that same configuration as hers? Her grandmother's body, the bodies of her daughters as well. How can she love the bodies of other women and men close to her who have inherited the bodies, shapes, and configurations of their ancestors? To attack a woman thusly destroys her rightful pride of affiliation with her own people and robs her of the natural lilt she feels in her body, no matter what height or size or shape she is. In essence, the attack on women's bodies is a far-reaching attack on the ones who have gone before her as well as the ones who will come after her. Wow, that was so beautiful. Isn't that rich? Mm -hmm. It's holding a really different tone mm -hmm. in light of the things that we've it's just talked about. Good. Which is yeah, it's interesting. It's so important to think like that as you're talking. What it kind of makes me think of is like well, the question that comes up is like, well, what are your daughters going to think mm -hmm. of how you treat your body in whatever decisions that you make? What are they going to think? And what do I personally, as Jessica, just Jessica the mom, not Jessica anybody on the internet? Yeah. What do I hope my girls? feel about their bodies I hope that there's like a real love like a super precious love and I'm in a stage now where Eloise she's seven she I can tell she's enjoying her body um, I can also tell that she's starting to think certain things about it like she like mentioning that she has um, some some like darkness under her eyes oh interesting um, like maybe from being tired or something but that was the first time that I've heard her really make an observation about her body and do it in a way that was a slightly negative tone. And I'm really aware of it because yeah. I don't want her to experience the stuff that I did. So I'm like hyper vigilant. I also was hesitant to put her in dance class because it, dance classes were like the place where I learned that my body was bad because mm -hmm. of people talking badly about bodies and just sure. kind of being like, your legs shouldn't do this. Like they shouldn't, your thighs shouldn't touch. And then going home and being like, oh, but mine do, you know? Um, yeah. Do you know that Instagram has banned that hashtag? You oh, can't use hashtag great. thigh gap. That's great. I think like how dare someone convince me that there was something wrong with my legs, but, but here I am, you know? Yeah. Um, but I just, I, I guess what I would say to a daughter is the same thing I would say to a postpartum mother. Mm -hmm. And that's that your, your body is so beautiful and so complex and your feelings towards it are going to be complicated mm -hmm. because you live in a world that's really confusing to navigate as a woman. Yeah. And you do your best to take care of it and nourish it, mm -hmm. mind, body, and soul. So eat well, um, but also like let it enjoy dessert if yes. dessert is something that brings you joy. And if you feel out of control when it comes to food, ask somebody you love to help be a boundary setter with you or mm -hmm. ask somebody to go for a walk with you after a meal mm -hmm. so that you aren't tempted to do something that would be destructive to your body. Yeah. That you're not alone in whatever feelings you have towards your body and that you are worth being a person who really treasures your body. Like you're yeah. that important. It's not that the beautiful people, whoever the world has defined as beauty, which mm -hmm. by the way, that has changed like every decade. Every decade. Yeah. Um, every woman, man as well, but since the women are here, is worthy of loving the, the body that you're in. Mm -hmm. And it's okay if that's very confusing. And it's yeah. okay if we don't know what to do about things like Botox and boob, job, boob yeah. jobs or what food to eat or what food to cut out or how much to exercise. Like it's, it's confusing. And yeah. so that's, it's allowed. But I think encouraging girls and women to find a tender love 
towards your body or cultivate that or grow mm-hmm. that if you don't have one yeah. um, because you're worthy of that. And in yeah. it, it'll look the way that suits your life and is good for you. Yeah. And your body does so much more than just its aesthetic. Mm-hmm. This is what carries you. Mm-hmm. Like there can always be gratitude for the thing that carries you around. And I think that I would encourage people to like nestle into your own physicality a little bit more mm-hmm. and enjoy your body as the thing that brings you pleasure. Oh, the thing that really tastes good. and the thing that feels, that yeah. touches, that knows what the textures of the world are. It's the thing that hears for you. That's right. right? It carries around your eyes. So whatever yeah. whatever joy you find in life, it comes to you through this body. That's right. And there's gratitude to it for that. That's right. And when it comes to speaking about your body, if you're struggling, speak it out. But I would say, so earlier I was talking about how if you speak it out, it can be really negative for the listener, Mm. but there's a way to speak it out that's actually positive for the listener. And it could look like this, Lane, I am so insecure about the way I look right now. And it is actually really affecting the way I feel in recording this, you know, whatever it is we're making together. We make a lot of stuff together. Um, And then me being able to say that to you and either be listened to or encouraged or be told, Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I have felt that too. That's such a bad feeling. Or do you know what? I have dry shampoo. Is it that you just haven't been able to shower? Like, you know, the the very practical friend stuff. Mm -hmm. Suddenly the conversation is productive. This morning, a friend of mine who had a baby was texting me about that thing of not being in photos, right? She, she doesn't Mm -hmm. feel comfortable yet. And I was able to say, Oh my gosh, I know those feelings. That's the worst. Yeah. Please take pictures of yourself. You're worthy of having pictures of this time of your life, Mm -hmm. even if nobody else sees them, but later you treasure them. Um, yeah. And it can be that because that's reaching out as opposed to simply like spewing, spewing your self abuse in the uh-huh. presence of someone else. Yeah. There's exactly. a distinction. Exactly. Because then someone can nurture and nourish you yeah. in a way that you're struggling to do for yourself. Totally. And it's also contagious to be that type of person. Mm-hmm. Like you notice when you're around people who are beautiful in the way that it like emanates from them. Yeah. Um, I mean, even we think about who are the most beautiful people in our lives, really, it's not going to be because of what they look like. I, I would even wonder if there's like a language distinction to draw between like the most beautiful and the most attractive, Mm -hmm. the most attractive people in your life are not always the people who necessarily are in the thumbs up category. Like we were talking about earlier, like that the world would be like, yeah, that's the most beautiful one. Those are not always the most attractive Mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Like there's, there's an essence that emanates from a person and mm-hmm. that is something that you have control over. That's right. And if you need to look to your kids for guidance, you can, because your kids are going to be drawn to people who are oh. beautiful from the inside, mm-hmm. meaning cool to be around, fun, engaging. They yeah. see people, they talk, they listen, they laugh. Like the qualities that are, that are what, what, what is beautiful in the rich, rich, rich sense. Mm-hmm versus, oh my gosh, look, that person's the most attractive person in the room, but your kid is not going to care about Uh that if they're not a lovely person, right? Yeah. So kind of follow that. Like what is the, what is the really rich, deep, beautiful stuff that we can Mm -hmm. cultivate as people? Yeah. And then we'll figure out the 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 physicalities the outside the sun is genuinely setting on my apartment as we have just Uh and the camera might be joyfully the camera might not even be (laughs) oh wow you guys this did not go at all as we planned no i hope that it was good for your heart that's what we wanted for this yeah yeah. If it was good for my heart. Yeah. It was I, good for mine too. I always get a little scared when you see vulnerable stuff about me. Mm-hmm. Um, also, just like to say some comments that aren't loving or helpful, I um, asked my friend to delete. So, I love that. <laughs> so if you're here to just hate on Jess, she's not going to see it. Yeah, don't bother. So don't bother. Yeah. But um, <laughs> also just yeah. like maybe don't. <laughs> <laughs> just maybe don't do that. But um, no, we really appreciate you guys. And really the heart of all of this was just that we want you to know that you are beautiful in the rich 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 deep meaningful way yeah and your body is worth respecting and appreciating mm-hmm. loving in this time yeah and we even we celebrate it and change it yeah, yeah. we and celebrate you, it for what it can do if you um grew a baby inside of that body and that that's the reason why your body looks different right now uh it, your body might be soft and and kind of squishy more than ever and i just hope you realize that it's a very cozy landing spot for that mm. beautiful baby you made wow. so don't rush through that just enjoy the fact that you are exactly what that little one needs right now mm-hmm. and in time you will have more opportunities to give your body maybe the attention that you wish you could give it right now but right now all your attention is going towards that sweetheart little 
love that yeah. you made. So just, yeah. it'll be all right. We got it. Yeah. You did a really good job. You did a really good job. You're doing a great job and Merry almost Christmas Merry time. Almost Christmas. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.